The Lowbirds, that's our word. Brought to you by Room for Free. Uh, no, I don't think we're... <laughs> Hopefully that'll be a thing later. I don't know. Uh, we're brought to you by Bipcot, I guess. And I'm here with David from ZGY again. Who's having, again. Again. But wah, right wah, right wah. now, I'm no, it's not. Wah, wah. <laughs> I'm just I do I do kind of like having a rotating guest thing, but we just I was just like I need to get something out because we haven't recorded any podcast in what like 21 days. It's been ridiculous because it was like okay, Freedom Fest is happening, and then I couldn't get anybody to do a show with me while I was doing that, which is weird because I was on I was on day mode, right? Like this is when everybody's awake is during the day, <laughs> but and no one no one could do a show with me. And then, uh, you know, I had somewhat of a, like, I got noticed that my grandmother had like one to three months left to live. And I was like, oh, I better get down there and see her before she goes. Because I'd rather see her live than go to a funeral. Absolutely. So I went down to Kansas and then, oh, the flight back. Oh, literally <laughs> Hitler. Liter- We're going to get into <laughs> Hitler later. Uh, but literally Hitler. Uh, Southwest Airline is the biggest cock block ever. Like, I had a date. Like, I met some girl, and we had a date scheduled. Like, okay, I'm going to get, I'm probably going to get in about seven o'clock. You know, I could probably get ready in an hour, and then we'll go have drinks afterwards. My flight was delayed for f- seven hours. <laughs> oh, no, about six and a half hours. And I was stuck over in. F- phoenix because you guys like to have monsoons <laughs> yeah it's just what we do we just had like a rain for 30 minutes and because there was like five minutes worth of lightning in it mm-hmm. that was enough for them to shut down everything like shut were, it all down yeah they were like shut down everything, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn it and because of that like my my the the plane that was supposed to come in to pick me up uh was diverted to tucson and then they were stuck on that plane the people that were coming in from vegas to phoenix were stuck on that plane for five hours like they had to sit inside of the plane for five hours and the air conditioner gave out like it worked when it was up in the air but when it was down on the on the ground like the air conditioner wasn't working it was Uh. they were were they were more they were more angry with 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 the flight than we were and like every every seat was packed it was it was just terrible Every possible so, way it was terrible. Sounds like time for a mutiny. I didn't get into like one thirty. <laughs> I would have been storming the exit door on that plane. Yeah. Yeesh. I mean, allegedly. Yeah, and I got totally <laughs> cock blocked. Totally cock blocked. Thanks, Southwest hey, Air. Never again. Thank, thanks, Mother Nature. <laughs> no, that was Southwest Air. <laughs> like they had plenty of opportunity to solve that problem, but they kept. Yeah. yeah. They kept delaying stuff because oh we don't have enough flight attendants and our and our flight almost got canceled because there because all the other pilots were like oh I'm maxed out now <laughs> oh sorry I'm wasted I'm timed out <laughs> no I'm timed out now <laughs> right because right. they can only they can only spend so much time flying yeah dude this is exactly like I would much rather drive for 28 hours to Kansas and visit my family than <laughs> than fucking deal with that shit again I, I've done that drive man it's it's no joke oh yeah it's no but, joke but I enjoy it so yeah well I'm sorry that happened to you buddy yeah. don't uh don't judge us by our storm you know if I, I knew loved it personally because <laughs> I was sitting at home <laughs> drinking a beer watching a football game and I had the windows open which never happens in August and in or July in Phoenix, whatever day it was, I forgot. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was it was a great time for me. <laughs> if if I known that I, that I was going to be delayed five hours, I would have popped out and you know like, where's the nearest pub? Let's go have a beer or two. Yeah, man. Yeah. I thought um, I was going to tell you. I didn't know you were going to be there that long. I would have said uh, did I? like, there's a Oso Brewery in the airport somewhere. Uh, I think there's a Four Peaks too. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't even had to leave really, but. Yeah, it was no joke. There was like a funnel cloud, um, like an almost tornado that was there. The the water was like shooting out of the manholes, on, you know, <laughs> in the term on, on the ground level of the terminal or whatever. It was nuts, man. Yeah. So freeway shut down. <clears throat> yeah, Good screw times. all that. Yeah, oh, but you know, I do like monsoons, like when I live in them. But when I'm having to fly while they're happening, it's it's no fun. Yeah. But speaking of Hitler, we should talk about. <laughs> We should talk about the state of YouTube when it comes to like political discussion, um, at least on the on our our end of it, in the anarcho sphere. <coughs> and I'm not just talking about libertarians. <coughs> Excuse me, I had, and I caught something while I was in Kansas. Thank you. Saying get some val- valley fever. Yeah, <laughs> still got some dust in the lung there. <laughs> 
but yeah, the state of uh, of anarcho capitalism or just anarcho anything on YouTube is is bad. How it works is like there are like intelligent, uh, reasonable anarcho communists who are completely wrong about everything. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And then you then you have like anarcho capitalists who are ideologically I agree with more than than them, right? Uh, Absolutely. Who are just fucking the the scum of the earth or complete fucking idiots. Like that that's the state of YouTube right now. When when YouTube started out, like there was a lot of great and caps on YouTube, like Tassos, uh, Junior Bacon Chi, um Jacob Spinney, uh Link Unithar, who's still making great YouTube videos, but he's been kind of away for a while because he, he works in the oil industry and oil is kind of weird right now. So he's kind con- he const- he's constantly busy. But there were people who were like talking about or Exomniverse. There was like these mm-hmm. people who were talking about these ideas and they were very articulate, very smart people. I mean, I'm not that articulate, but you know, like I'm I'm a, they enjoy my content, so I, I consider that like, well, at least I'm on somewhat your level, I guess. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I, yeah, I'm more into satire and comedy. Yeah, everyone's got their uh strength, their gift. Yeah, yeah. So there was all these great people, but then they all left. Except for Link Unithar, uh, they all left, and now we're stuck with people like Mr. Dapperton and Esoteric <laughs> Entity, who are just god awful. Yeah. God awful. Um, like Shane Killian will make some good content every once in a while, but he's starting to do right. this thing too. There's this thing where everybody's like they're trying to take the um, like because Armored Skeptic, I guess, kind of started this trend. Um, you know, and it, it, it's it's not him. Like he he does some some good stuff, but. <clears throat> what he does is he has like this little avatar and then like there's an animated background and they talk and they, they talk through vicariously through these little, little characters. So Mr. Dapperton isn't, you know, some, some, gin, some guy with a ginger beard and a, and a, and a ball cap sideways. No, 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 no. He's like this, <laughs> this guy in a suit wearing a, a, a hockey mask with hand cap colors on it. Yeah, very dapper, hence the name. Yeah, and it's it's cringe inducing. Usually, usually surrounded by uh, you know machine or you know rifles and women and cash. Yeah, that's, you know, that's cool, but I'm all about that. But it's it's so cringe inducing. Right, and um, that seems to be the trend right now. That's what everybody wants to do, and and it'd be, and you know it'd be fine if they were like artic or like smart or make make valid points. But it's constantly like let's bash SJWs, let's just run through these tired, like libertarian one hundred and one kind of level arguments about things, and it's like low hanging fruit. Yeah, kinda. right. Like these these people are not great. So I mean, if if you do produce content, like if you're one of these the podcasts that I listen to, and there's lots of them, it don't have to be libertarian, right? You could be like Brian Sovereign. Well, Brian Sovereign's libertarian-ish, I guess. <coughs> but you know, there's a there's a huge market for someone who's going to talk about a lot of these ideas who aren't complete fucking idiots. <laughs> but <laughs> all of these things end up talking about Nazism. Like everybody's like. You know, like, well, you believe in socialism. Let's find the nearest socialist state and compare it to you. Like Venezuela, which, by the way, like, I have I have some opinions about Venezuela. But they'll, they'll try to pin, like, Venezuela on an anarcho-communist. It's, it's like, that's it's not what they're advocating. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, man, <laughs> we'll talk, we should talk about Venezuela. But trying to pin Venezuela on, you know, Bad Mouse Productions, no. <laughs> that's, like, what, what he advocates is far worse. But you can't say like that's that's an example of what he's advocating. It's that's silly, you know. What would you agree with me Absol- on that? No, oh, absolutely. Okay. No. Um, yeah, I'm not. You know, I don't follow the tube of views as closely as you do. But you know, obviously, I'm familiar with that. Pretend and some of these other guys, and it, 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 the quality has definitely suffered. I think in mm-hmm. terms of 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 the, of the output. Um, so what's the solution? You know, how do we uh, rectify that? I guess I encourage know. people to get on this and start having actual discussions about ideas, not try to pin boogeymen on people. But right. there is one thing that I definitely should be, I want to talk about, and that's Nazism, because <laughs> like <laughs> it seems as, a, as though everybody wants to try to like pigeonhole Hitler on everybody now. Like like Godwin's Law is back in fashion, and it's, you know it's back in full full swing, baby, full swing. <laughs> Yeah. 
No, and uh, I think uh, Jeremy made a good meme about that today, mm-hmm. about a uh, everybody on the con- you know the the right says everybody on the left is a communist mm-hmm. or a Marx, and everybody on and the left says everybody on the right is not as a Hitler. Yeah, and everybody you know we're just sitting here like you're fucking both falling for a both bullshit conquer and divide. Yeah, tactic. That's what it is. So, so yeah, that. Uh, that kind of happened with uh, what's his name, Jeff Deist, uh Oh, from God. the Mises. Mises. <laughs> we should really talk about that. I, I know everybody's probably thinking what I, like, unless you've seen what I've already said on Facebook. Yeah, a lot of people are going to think like I'm jumping on that bandwagon against the LVMI because I have issues with LVMI uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm definitely not on board with this this witch hunt. <laughs> definitely not on board with this witch hunt. But what do you know about Nazi Germany? Like, do you know anything about how the economics work over there? Like, if you do, how do you think it works? Or worked? Uh, there? Worked. Uh, or allegedly worked. worked in quotes, allegedly worked. worked. <laughs> well, I mean, Nazi, you know, Nazi short for National Socialist. Mm-hmm. So it was a socialist economy, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, Keep going. Less, I'm going to. I understand. Okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of the, the, big guys who who studied world war ii or germany but um yeah I, I everything was um essentially for the country or you know what i mean it was it was very centralized in terms of the economy or what dro- what what this the focus was it was it was no folk very little focus on individual rights or or uh you know anything like that it was all for the the motherland or or what have you was it so the, very centralized, very top down. Well, fatherland, fatherland. Yeah, the fatherland. Yeah, the sorry. motherland I was, thinking, was I was Soviet Mother Russia. Russia, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is a red flag. Uh, you know, Deutschland. Pun Uber intended. Alice, you know <laughs> what I mean? Red flag. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ger- Germany, or you know, Germany above all. Yeah. So, so I'm going to correct you, <laughs> like, because I have looked into this stuff. I've looked heavily into Nazism because the more I this stuff gets thrown at me, the more I'm like interested and in, you know not pleasingly and and a lot of the alt-right stuff too makes me want to like really dig into like what what these people really or what what this party really believed so the the name is kind of interesting because it says socialism in it but it also says nationalist and it's kind of indicative of what hitler liked to do and if you look at a lot of his speeches like he'll on one side he'll talk about like how bad communists are and you know they're terrible and we sh- you know we should throw them in uh, in gas chambers and, the, and he did gulags yeah he did mm-hmm. <laughs> no gulags is communist <laughs> uh, i'm getting i'm getting yeah i keep getting my totalitarian regimes mixed up man yeah uh, dang it so <laughs> yeah um so yeah, like he, he like he 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 really kind of pandered to his audience, and like I'm not comparing Trump to Hitler. I'm not. I know that plenty of people will. Um, but the, he's Mango Mussolini. Yeah, but <laughs> they they had the similar kind of style of 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 of, of um, kind of rallying his, their base, which is they would appeal to the audience. So if yeah, Hitler populism. was going to yeah, if Hitler was going to talk to people who were. Uh, he knew that were like in favor of socialism. He would talk bad about the liberals, like oh the liberals. And I'm talking about liberals in the in the in the European sense. Cla- uh, classical, yeah, classical sense, liberals. Right? Yeah, he would talk bad about the liberals, like oh yeah, if, uh, you know, capitalism is terrible. Like we should we should abolish it. I'm not for in favor of him. And then when he would talk to the when he would talk to um, you know people who were more liberal, he would say oh yeah, these communists are terrible. These socialists are horrible. Like we're a different kind of socialism. Don't don't get us fucked up. So they, he would he would kind of play both sides of the aisle. But what his his idea was was he wanted to have socialist goals. Like he had socialist goals where he wanted to have institutions that would take care of the of the public, mostly on the taxpayer dime. But he didn't want to do it through nationalizing. Like he did nationalize some things, like a lot of things rather. But right. what he really wanted to do is rather than having a, a, a state building tanks rather what he would do is he would say okay mercedes benz you're here uh we're going to make sure that you have no competition and we're going to do this through increasing uh you know taxation and all these regulations to make regulations yeah impossible for anybody fascism basically yeah yeah yeah. well yeah it is fascism (laughs) but this is all it's not just well because national socialism the big difference between the two is uh identitarianism which they were like Aryan race, but um, that's like the big difference between the two. 
Um, well, it, it's the only difference. It's not much. <laughs> but, so, like, yeah, they would say, like, we're going to make it impossible for any kind of com- company to come into the market and compete with you. Uh, and, you know, we're going to tax you and all the stuff. But on top, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to buy tanks off of you and you're going to basically have uh, a, a near monopoly or a state kind of protected industry. So and then when we want tanks, we were going to go through you and we're going to give you a bunch of money. And so you don't have to worry about all these taxes that you're paying because you're going to get it back through uh, you're going to get it back through, uh, you, know, uh, you know, government contracts, you know, through edicts. Regulation and taxation would pr- like make these 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 firms like a monopoly, which would basically basically make them a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a de facto there we go a de facto arm of the state, and they would do that with all of the all the other industries in the nation that weren't explicitly nat- nationalized. So yeah, when when communists say like. It's it's capitalism. Well, according to their definition, it is because they only define capitalism in terms of private ownership private. of the means to productions and trade. <laughs> so if that's your definition, then it's capitalism. <laughs> but pretty yeah, pretty narrow definition. Yeah, but it, but people who actually advocate these kind of liberal ideas, and I'm again European liberal, then it's not. It's it's not what they would advocate at all. And so everybody's trying to pin the boogeyman, like because he has socialist ideas and he has very kind of liberal ideas on top of that, but it's a third position. And in fact, that's what he <laughs> called it, the third position. Right. I was saying it almost sounds like the third way, how, mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of advocated by uh, modern day politicians, you know, uh, we'll find a third way to do it. You know? Yep. So yeah, like Mussolini wrote a, uh, a, a, like a treatise on fascism. I, th- I think he actually called it the fascist manifesto, or at least that's what it's called. And he talks about like, yeah, we need to have unions, uh, you know, rise up against the capitalist workers to basically help the state control them <laughs> and all this other <laughs> stuff. And uh, I actually had like a debate with some zeitgeist and he was I think he actually was retarded. Uh, and I, I mean that <laughs> legitimately, like he had Down like, syndrome or li- some kind. Literally. Right. Yeah. Uh, just a Developmentally bit of disabled. <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you if you prefer. Um. And he was saying, like, well, the book says, like, he's against liberals. And it's like, dude, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is not the same kind of liberal <laughs> like you're equivocating. <laughs> but okay. Context matters. Yeah, context yeah. Is, matters. It's everything. So, yeah, I think it's un- unless someone advocates fascism, you can't pin fascism on any ideology. You can't say, well, that's socialism or, oh, that's. You know that's capitalism. It's neither. It's right. The third position, and he called it. No, I, yeah. I, I think a lot of people do have that tendency to, um, and not not necessarily that it never is associated with the right wing, mm-hmm. you know, but to always associate fascism with with uh, the right. And there, yeah, like you said, there, it's not a, it's not exclusive to one, you know, area of the horseshoe or one wing of the bird or whatever you want to call it. You know, the mm-hmm. left it can be just as fascist as the right, and vice versa. Yeah. So I, this is the basically the level debate that's on YouTube right now. It's just like, well, is Hitler really a socialist or is he really a capitalist? And that's what it's been about for the last forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's infuriating because it's weird, we're, that w- weird that we haven't moved past it, I guess. Yeah, we're not talking about our ideas anymore. Now we're just basically saying the other guy is literally Hitler. So join us. Okay, well, if you're a Hitler, then who's the Stalin? <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, you know, and 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 now that we know that those two are, what's the one that's not any of those? <laughs> and I'd rather go with that. So every, everything's falling into a dichotomy, and it's it's sad. Yeah, you know? I think you've seen you've seen a lot of, um, you know, like I said, Trump is not literally Hitler, but you've seen a lot of uh, him, you know, echoing those tactics. I mm-hmm. think where he was. Uh, giving the speech to the room full of uh, cops and he's like, yeah, you know, you don't have to, you can rough them up a little. I mean, you know, paraphrasing him, obviously he's like, you know, you don't have to put your your head on the back of his head and let him in nice, you know, Mm -hmm. but I don't do your Trump as well as you do, but um, you know, he's basically, and then he's out there throwing uh, red meat to his base or with the whole banning of the transgender people in the military. Um, So I, I think there are similar tactics to, you know what Hitler or a lot of politicians do, but 
Not exactly hitting there, you're right. No, no. But the the thing that they do share, and the reason why I brought Trump up is because they're populists. And I and, and I would also compare a lot of the things that Hillary was well not, not, not Hillary as as far as the tactics. Like I don't know. She did she did pander a lot, you know, hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I always carry hot sauce in my pocket. No, no, no one, no one fucking, ble- no one believe that. No, as as a I connoisseur mean, of hot sauces, I don't bring hot sauce with me. I don't. I would say if anybody was going to have a hot sauce in their purse, it would be you. Yeah, in my man purse. That's not my. That's my purse. That's my hot sauce. I don't know you. That's the name of the show. I'm writing that down now. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm out. See ya. Yeah. Out. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on. Yeah. <laughs> going out on a high note, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but yeah, you 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 always see that shameless kind of uh, pandering or or uh, you know zigzagging mm-hmm. to to in, during the campaign, but yeah, uh, it's pretty pretty shameless. Yeah. Um... Or or when she affected the black. I in no ways tired. <laughs> oh my god. She affected the black accent. Oh trying, yeah, and I think she's reading like a so Sojourner Truth passage or something. I don't. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, like uh, Bernie Sanders mm-hmm. and Trump do a lot of the same kind of thing. Like they're because they're populist, and that and mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that either of them are Hitler, um, but I would say that Trump is a fascist in 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 the in the definitions of, of what you want to call him. Like he he is a fascist, but he's not as fascist as like Mussolini or Hitler uh, for sure. But I would also say the same thing about Obama and Hillary Clinton, because what they really want to do is manage, manage, you know, private industry and pick winners and losers. Right. Yeah. Like Obamacare was basically almost a fascist policy, pretty damn close to a fascist policy. I, th- I think Hitler about as close as you get. healthcare. But yeah. I mean, when, when you have the uh, you know the companies you're trying to regulate writing the legislation for you, you know I don't mm-hmm. know if it gets much more hand in glove than that, um, or incestuous, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to, you know, term it. But yeah, but I just no, really I'm, wanted absolutely. to get that out there because it's it's been bothering me for the last couple of days. And I did a pod, and I I know you listen to my driving shit home podcast. Well, I say thank you do. I do when I yeah I try to man yeah. And I was talking about these ideas and. Everybody's just like, oh, you're this. And if you disagree, then you're making an O2 Scotsman. And it's like, no, that's not what an O2 no. Scotsman is. <laughs> it's really not. Um, it's just it's just bad. It's just so bad. Like, and, and it just drives me up the wall that, you know, people like Esoteric Entity are moving up the charts in terms of subscribers and influence. And it's like, this guy is not brilliant at all. He's an idiot. Um, he and even that, even that name is like making me mad. <laughs> it's so, it's, it's fucking pretentious. I'm an esoteric entity. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, is this '97? <laughs> you know, like sounds like a three eleven. Sounds like a three eleven uh, song <laughs> title. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's a soft spot in my heart for three eleven, but yeah. <laughs> okay. But you don't have a tattoo, right? No, anyway. <laughs> no. If, it's okay if you do. I'm just, you know. No, just, I do have a 311 anyway. story. We should we should change the subject now. But um, <laughs> sp- speaking of, of, of bad bands like Lincoln Park and and my my continuing effort to continue trolling uh, Brian Sovereign, uh, not a fan. <laughs> but <laughs> not no, I'm a fan of his, but I'm I'm not a fan uh, of three of Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park, I got you. Three Eleven. I don't. Did they still? Did they still drop albums? I don't know, but they I'm have following. a huge following, man. Yeah. I know. I know um, people that. I guess they have like a yearly cruise, mm-hmm. or and like people go on it and they sail to. You some know, you won't hear Three Eleven. They... The Contra Cruise. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> They're not progressive yeah. enough. It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> It's Rush twenty four seven. I'd love to go on the concert cruise. Yeah, that would be fun. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't get that fan. You know, yeah. fan base. There, there's a lot of of uh, 
crackers for lack of a better term a lot of white people that can do reggae really well or dub or whatever but uh, you know i don't know 311 just never really jived with me yeah i was actually i was i I like some of their earlier stuff Mm -hmm. before you know before they got big and then it kind of then i just kind of was like okay whatever right yeah there was there was some other stuff that they released that released that were pretty good like i had a friend that was really into them and i was like well i like 311 but you're you're too much into this too much too much (laughs) i i think it is one of those cases where it's like don't judge the band by their fan base but i I just haven't got been able to get past that (laughs) at least the rat at least the rabid uh section of their fan base yeah um so when i went to public school (laughs) bringing this bringing this home when i was in public school like we had like this really like kind of authoritarian vice principal like the principal was fine but the vice principal was well no i mean in terms of uh, public school principals he was okay <laughs> it mm-hmm. still was bad but the vice principal was like like authoritarian she would ban anything based on the the smallest rumor like <laughs> safety pins like she wasn't concerned that people were going to hurt somebody with safety pins no 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 safety pins meant white supremacy anybody who wore it black white mexican whatever anyone who wore a safety pin and this was before the whole what was that trump thing the safety pin oh like a yeah you're safe here or it's it's not yeah it wasn't no which is like when i saw that i was like oh that's funny oh that's funny but um (laughs) She would ban it, like just 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 based on a rumor, and it was it was completely baseless. But she banned a whole bunch of other things, like you weren't allowed to wear Doc Martens with, uh, I think it was white laces, uh, because that right. was white supremacy. The skinheads. Yeah, you weren't allowed to wear. Um, so one of the things that they banned was three eleven shirts. You weren't allowed to wear three eleven shirts, and the <laughs> rationale was because there was a rumor. It wasn't true. That three eleven meant three times the eleventh letter, and that meant KKK. Right. And it's <laughs> funny because I think like one of the you know the DJ rapper guy, I don't remember what the band consisted of, but I know there was a couple of them that, or one or two of them, that were Hispanic, which is I <laughs> like, like like the little guy that goes chill, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, they're from Omaha. I don't know how many Mexicans were in I, Omaha. I was gonna in the say. 90s. I would say, well, they were from Omaha, but you know, I, I don't. <laughs> no, no offense, Nebraskans. Yeah. <laughs> but... Hi, Jared. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, <laughs> so it, like it was ridiculous, and I had a, I had a, okay. For, this was during with the Blue Album, so I, I need to preface this one, two. This shirt was awesome, and I'm sure that anybody who even probably didn't like uh, 311 at the time would have been like, oh, that shirt is actually pretty cool, because it was it was the 311 logo, but instead of being, like, screen printed on, it was, like, some sort of, like, patch, like, and it was weird, and when you looked at the patch, it kind of had this weird kind of hologram effect. It was really neat looking, but it was all gray, yeah. but once you really got looked close at it, you were like, okay, there's a 311 thing on there, but oh, wow, it's kind of weird hologram, but it was gray hologram. It wasn't rainbow or anything. And it was really neat. And like I had some, we had some issue where we had to talk to the, the principal about something because, you know, I was one of those kids that liked to get in fights a lot. And uh, they wanted to talk to my dad. And I was like, okay, I will just show up to, show up to school. Like I just threw on a shirt, whatever. And then when I got there, I was like, oh crap, I'm not supposed to be wearing this shirt. <laughs> and my dad was like, why? What's wrong with it? And he was like, he was like, well, because they think it, it's racist. And they were like, he was like, Okay, so I know 311, and I know the reason why cause he hated 311. But he's like, I, he's like, I know 311. I don't like 311, but racist? How is that racist? I was like, because it means cause they think it means three times the 11th letter. And he was like, there's rap in that music. <laughs> like, why would they say? <laughs> right. And it was, he was like, no, that's bullshit. He might, you're wearing that today. And he ended up having like a big discussion. So I was like the only nice. kid allowed in the school that was allowed to wear 311 shirts. And with every, <laughs> and it really good kind for of, you. Good for your dad, man. Yeah, That's my dad awesome. was my dad was pretty Hell yeah. cool. I I got in trouble for wearing a shirt. I don't know. I want to say I almost got kicked out of school, or not kicked out of school, but in trouble for wearing like a. I had a Primus sailing the seas of cheese shirt, and I I, I don't know. If somebody had a problem with that, or maybe it was okay. A I'm jealous. Shirt. It was I'm one jealous. Or the other. I, I wish know. I had that shirt when I was in junior high. <laughs> <laughs> Primus sucks. I just, uh, I just got the one up on the yeah. street cred there. Um, <laughs> No, it was, it was pretty horrible. It was like it was a white shirt, and then it just had like the uh, the the yellow album cover on the front. But pretty mm-hmm. awesome. 
But yeah, I went through the same kind of, you know, what would heavy be the handed problem with response. That? I don't, maybe it was a Slayer shirt. It was probably, I, I had a Slayer <laughs> shirt. It's probably that. It's a pentagram. <laughs> yeah. I can't, it's a skull with bullets, you know, coming out of its eyes or something. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I had a Primus shirt, but it was uh, when they had their brown album and it said back in brown. <laughs> it nice. said Primus on it. I love that shirt. My favorite shirt was my bright orange Aquabat shirt. And this one there was ska. <laughs> I love that shirt. Back in brown, that a brown shirt. That sounds way more gang affiliated or, you know, yeah. <laughs> sounds way more uh, Nazi affiliated than 311. Yeah. Well, it was because it's brown pride. You're allowed to have it, but no. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an all white band. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh no 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 no! Head was it? Uh, that was the brain was in it by then, so he was Hispanic. No, he was a pseudo Mexican. He wasn't Mexican. He was pseudo Mexican. That's right. Take that back. <laughs> I want to be a pseudo Mexican. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, but government sucks, and that's that's the moral of the story. Is you don't don't trust them. <laughs> we weren't allowed oh, to have absolutely. spiky hair and stuff like that. I mean, it wasn't even like. We weren't even, it wasn't like, oh, you can't have the spiky hair that punk rockers had. No, no, no. Like, just having, you know, the spiky hair that was like, popular in the 90s, you know, can't have Yeah, it. like an like a NSYNC kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> frosted tips. No, it no, wasn't even, not even about the frosted tips. Like, if you if your hair wow. was even a little bit up and it kind of spiked what? a little bit, like, you know, the kind of about... messy look. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But flat, top, flat tops were okay or what? Like Flat tops were okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Oh, you, you look like you're ready for the military. You're yeah. you go right in. You rat, know? When it have a rat tail or a mullet, there you go, man. You're, for, you're good to go. That's all. Rat tails. Oh, I need to bring those back. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I think it all came down to the fact that she probably liked, you know, Queensryche. <laughs> and it just couldn't, <laughs> it couldn't stand. <laughs> so, like, nose piercings and leather were okay, but. <laughs> yeah. No 311 shirts. Yeah. Ape drapes, fine. Spiked hair, no, no, no. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, like. Yeah, so n moral of the story never go full fash, right? Never or go full don't, fash. <laughs> don't, go, don't go fash at all. Yeah. So, yeah, and like. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I say, and don't accuse people like Jeff Deist of. Oh, yeah, Jeff Deist. Of, Deist of being a, you know. Having a Nazi dog whistle when it's pretty much it's pretty clear to anybody who actually listened to what he said yeah. that he was ra railing against everything that you know the Nazis were about. So yeah, so I should probably provide Just, context because we have some people that may not with, know what's going on, but I'm sure a lot of my lead. listeners probably listened to Tom Woods and he did a podcast about it. Um, but I had seen what he said, and I am familiar with the blood and soil line. I am very familiar. It's an exclusively like Nazi term. Um, but what he was, but in terms of like, just that context, like people were just like, Oh look, the lines in there, it's a dog whistle. And it's like, that's not how dog whistles work. Like you just can't say like, Oh, like, so we're having a conversation and you know, like we're saying like fuck Nazis and you know, they're full of shit. And I'm just like, <laughs> and I just say like, and I make a joke about 1488. You can't say like, Oh, th th see, he, he oh, just yeah. said 1488. <laughs> it's a dog whistle. You know, like everything he said before was, you know, right. It's counted out. Yeah. Now he's blown. Now he's trying to get people on the alt right listening. No, <laughs> like, nope. Is, so what he was saying, like the, the, the con, what he was saying in that speech was it's for new libertarianism. And it's kind of like a play on the um, for new libertarian book, which is actually the Rock book. That, yeah. yeah. Which actually the book that got me to stop being a statist. Like I had, I, cause I saw the title libertarian manifesto and i was like okay so this is going to be like because i didn't know rothbard that well i knew that he was an economist uh and i knew that he was friends with mises and i was like well i like mises so let's check this out maybe this is like the you know, the book that's going to show that advocate for a very small government this is what i want mm -hmm. and i used to make fun of anarchists back in the day too like like ian freeman <clears throat> which i still liked free talk live back then. anyways getting off topic so i, I listened <laughs> to this book and it was an audio book and the way Rothbard does it, it was it, it was very clever. And what he does is he goes like, well, let's talk about things that, you know, most a lot of people would agree with, you know, like even if you aren't 
a libertarian. Like, let's get rid of, you know, these huge pr uh, programs that are just giant and, and, you know, terrible that a lot of people, you know, even people on the left would disagree with, you know, would agree with, you know, drugs and all this stuff. And you're like, okay, all right, this is fine. He kind of gets you to come into the shallow end of the, of the water and say, okay, come on in. Yeah. And then he kind of leads you down to the deep end. And, you know, but like, and you're like, okay, so that's great. Oh, military? Okay, let's hear his case against the military. Oh, wow, okay. And Whoa. by the time of it, you know, then courts and, and you're like, mm -hmm. I just thought you were just going to make a case against the welfare state. And here I am, like, agreeing with you <laughs> that we should <laughs> abolish the whole thing. Uh, and you just let, and I was, I was at the train stop when the book ended, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> I'm an anarchist. And I remember, I remember this. Nice. I was at the train stop in Riverside. Like I had left for Kansas to, on a train, got arrived in California, an anarchist. And I was going to visit my friends, and they were like, "Oh, yeah, you're still libertarian." And I'm like, "I don't know what I am anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know." Yeah, it was a journey, uh, journey for you in more ways than one. And yeah, uh, so, but very cool. So like he was kind of doing that, but he was explaining like you know like Rothbard understood these things, like that people mm -hmm. have these kind of grigries in their head. And libertarians have have gotten to the point where they're yeah they're an anarch uh, they're they're an atheist so they they go out and they see like people who they want to convert in or not convert that's a bad word uh, but you know try to persuade them Convince, of these ideas right. yeah and what they're doing is like, they immediately oh your your religion you you have a religion you're an idiot you're stupid like ha 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 like and it's not going to be very convincing. And he's trying to explain that people have these kind of conceptions and you need to respect the fact that these people have these conceptions and be a little bit more open to their frame of mind before you start convincing him of your ideas. And that was the whole thing. And he made a case against, you know, um, uh, he was making or rather making cases for decentralizations, for markets, against the welfare state, all the things that, you know, Nazis love. They love all these things. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, yeah, they love the a strong opposite, nation. Rather. Right. They want a strong nation. They don't. They, Hitler was a very staunch advocate uh, for centralization of power. He really railed against decentralization uh, in numerous speeches, and mm -hmm. like all this stuff that are explicitly anti-Nazi. And at the very end, he said, "So, people, you got to understand that people have." love for the concepts like you know blood and soil and god and nation and you need to understand that before you start jumping in and and you know talking to these people and understand their perspective and talk to them with that understanding and convince them that those ideas are wrong and that's what he was saying with that it wasn't right I'm for blood and nation. It was not. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. He wasn't. You know, he wasn't banging on the podium and not, yeah. you know blood, advocating for it. You know. <laughs> 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 it, it, <laughs> exactly it, it reminds me of um it's like a fable or a parable where i think it was this the sun and the wind had a had a bet there was a there was a traveler walking and he was had his cloak on or a scarf or whatever and the sun and the, and the wind had a bet and they said i bet i can make you know him shed his cloak before you and the wind said okay i'll take that bet so the wind goes and he just blows and blows and blows on this guy and all the guy does is like cling tighter to his his cloak you know to his vest or whatever so the sun comes out does his thing and eventually the guy gets too hot and he drops his you know starts shedding his his clothing drops his cloak so mm -hmm. i think in terms of like tactics or like you said how we approach um people who still cling to these uh institutions or, or spooks or whatever you want to call them yeah it, it, you, it, was, you know what I mean? it was it, it a, was very an anti-spook speech but he went under property rights but that's a different thing <laughs> right it's all about how you know and it, it is tempting you know to i i can see like how you, how um you know anarchists or ancaps or or what have you libertarians get frustrated with people who still cling to these vestiges of statism uh how it can be frustrating and you kind of get a little you know wanting to put them down or or contemptuous of them and i think we're all to some extent guilty of it but mm -hmm. i i think that was kind of the the tact or the the path that uh jeff deist was trying to take um you know in that speech mm -hmm. and i i think he was more or less right you know i don't like he said he advocated for you know decentralization um <clears throat> you know self-ownership all that so
for the most part. So yeah. the whole, th- you know, the whole thing with, cause he used a, a, a phrase that has historically been associated with a horrible well, is exclusively um, associated. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Fair enough. You know what I mean? But he wasn't using it uh, as an exhortation or, or a, right. a call to, to arms. He was quite the contrary. Saying, right. Exactly. So, you know, like we said earlier, context matters. And yeah. I think within the context of the, speech he was giving uh, um yeah there's no dog whistle there he wasn't you know what i mean yeah and it, like i under i understand the concept of dog whistles like i've been i've been talking about them for a while like there's there's plenty of examples where like you hear trump dog whistling for things and people go like well you know <clears throat> that just could mean anything and it's like no if you understand what dog whistles are and if people are doing them frequently it's it's a good red sign and look, I have problems with the Mises Institute for sure. Like I, I've been, I've been very critical of the Mises Institute. Uh, I've been very, pr- like I've, I've also given them praise when they deserve it. But this is not an example. And I, I saw Matt. By the way, Matt, hurry up and get your shit together and be on the show. Um, <laughs> but um, seriously, yeah. But Matt had said like, yeah, it, it was it was really dumb for him to to use that phrase because the Mises Institute has very vocal and powerful enemies, people in the Cato yeah. Institute. Yeah, is, I say even within the quote unquote libertarian, yeah. you know, ranks or whatever, and they will use anything, anything to to drive a, a campaign against them. Uh, this is this is one of the examples, and it, it's very clear. And I, and Horowitz. Oh, I have lots of problems with as well. Like he's still a friend on Facebook. I don't know why he hasn't unfriended. Well, let me see. He may have unfriended me. <laughs> I don't know. This, he may after this. He he is a block bitch for sure. Let's see. Horowitz. Well, let me. See. Well, he shows up in my search, and it says we're still friends. Wow, I'm amazed. I'm truly amazed <laughs> that one he shows up, and two that he hasn't. Uh, you know that he hasn't blocked me or unfriended me. I'm amazed. Mm. But uh, yeah, like there was, there's a video that I, I and I, I'll constantly use this video uh, or link to people to this video when they start talking about the Fed conspiracies. And I'm like, look, the whole thing about like the Federal Reserve being a secret cabal. How's your kids doing? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Never have kids. Not even once. Uh, <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, it's anarchy in action, man. Spontaneous yeah. order or disorder in this case. That's nah, fine. <laughs> at, least, at, least, at least we're not breathing on the mics again. Yeah, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> I think we got I, th- I think we took care of that. Yeah, we fixed that. It's it's been sounding good so far. Uh what was I saying? <laughs> I distracted myself. Oh, uh, yeah, Stephen Horowitz. Horowitz, right. Yeah, he has a, a video and it's really good and it's called uh, do we do we need a federal reserve uh do we still need a central bank? Uh, and the video he talks about like all these Fed Federal Reserve conspiracies, and he goes through and he explains like these are not true. Like a lot of the the stuff that you see in <laughs> the American Dream. <laughs> so, sorry, man. <laughs> it's okay. Like a lot of things you see in the American Dream or uh, you know America Freedom to Fascism. A lot of that stuff it's crap. He's like that said, there's still a good case to be made against the the central bank. <laughs> And you can do it without having to resort, to resort to these conspiracies that people will just ignore you right off the bat. Because a lot of them have roots in, like, anti-Semitism. So when you start talking right. about these to, to most people, I mean, like, most, like, I wouldn't say that, he, I'm definitely not saying that G. Edward Griffin is an anti-Semite, quite the contrary. Um, but, like, he does kind of dip into those, which, like, it's the, it's the genesis of it. It's, it's a genetic fallacy to say that he's an anti-Semite because these ideas spawn from them. But the, it, it's, it, it does have its roots in that and that they're not being rational about it. It's all about the Jewish conspiracies. And it's kind of funny because you'll see the American dream. There's a, there's a part where, like, there's uh, the Rothschild thing turns into a thing with its tentacles, which that whole thing has its root in anti-Semitism as well, that the Jews have their right. tentacles around everything. Um, but yeah, like you don't need these arguments and it's a really good video. And then you're just like Horowitz, can you please just stick to econ, please? And he's not really good at that either, but still just stick with that, please. When you start just, to- just- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, it's unfortunate when you, um, 
do have a legitimate beef or a legitimate argument about a certain uh, entity or, you know, like the Federal Reserve, and then you delve into the whole, like I said, nonsense conspiratorial aspect of it, it totally discredits anything else you may have been right about. Mm-hmm. And like, for instance, that like this uh, Horowitz, very good about, or, or you know, fairly good about e- economics or what have you. But now he's like trying to make hay over this uh, speech, and it's, you know, gonna. I mean, if people want to, you know, logically, and look at it in, in context of the speech that was given, it's gonna discredit anything else he may be right. accurate or right about. You know, so you're not doing. He's not doing himself any uh, favors in the long run. You know, by trying to virtue signal about what, you know, was said at, in this speech or whatever. Yeah. And it was dumb. The whole thing is just dumb. <laughs> Everybody's a Nazi now. That's what every that's what everything is now. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that meme. Everyone who disagrees with me is a Nazi, you know, sliding yeah. down the rainbow. It's like <laughs> it's it's self-actualizing. An emotional or, child's you know? guide to a political discussion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was supposed to be a joke, not a blueprint. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so tired of this Nazi shit. So tired of it. And it's funny because, like, I if you go back and listen to some of the earlier podcasts of, of the Lulberts, I actually would like I I I I, dis- I I have huge disagreements with Richard Spencer over, especially identitarianism and and race realism and all that stuff. Fine, but I was at the time. Richard Spencer was very much a, like kind of conservative, like he had very libertarian leaning economic prescriptions. Right. And I used to be like, "Stop calling him Nazi because that's not an accurate term because he's just an idea. He's just he's you know he's a racist piece of shit." Like I agree with you with that, but when you start calling him a Nazi, like he's not advocating for a fat. Now he is. Now he's like defending like the uh, Holodomor and <laughs> and and all, yeah, and advocating and for you- socialism and yeah. It's almost, you know, and now you see people like Jared Howe doing that and, or, you know, more or less doing that. And it's almost like you push the, I don't want to say you push those people, but you almost encourage them by that kind of rhetoric. You know what I mean? Like maybe they were on the, they had those tendencies or they were on the fence a little bit. And then all it takes is a little bit of, you know, goading or, or uh, trolling. and, And they're like, well, F it, you know, fuck it. I'm going to go full fucking fashy. You know what yeah. I mean? Might as well, because you, fuck you. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there is Which a- I'm, and, and there's a fine line. You should, you should call out bad actors and mm-hmm. people who advocate that shit. But at the same time, it's like, try not to push everybody off the fucking boat. I, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. that just because they, just because, um, you know, you think they said something, you know, in this, like I said, there are, are genuine cases where that's absolutely justified, but in this case, it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> in my opinion. So why, you know, why push them in that direction any more than, you know, you have to just cause you want to, f- uh, self aggrandize or virtue signal or, or what have you. Yeah. Well, I mean like there, there is a genuine, like when, when people start calling me things, there is a tendency to try to like look into things and 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 not try to be so uncharitable and in, and in interpretations, and you're willing, you're more willing, open to ideas that you would have never been. Um, case in point, there was a, um, a a blogger in Second Life back when Second Life was actually still a thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we used to be like kind of hang out in the trolling <clears throat> circles of Second Life, you know, with Woodbury and. The four channers and not not the patriotic negroes that was a whole different thing but um <laughs> definitely the more trolly aspects of uh of second life and there was a there was a lady who used to say like like everything to her was stalinist like anybody who disagreed with her they're stalinist or you know they're, they're advocating because she she was like a expat from um uh soviet the soviet union well, so, Russia. yeah right. so everything was Our every, union. it was one of those things um, and she was used to write about how we were basically crypto Stalinists and stuff. And so rather than, you know, say like, oh no, we're not, we're not Stalinists, you know, like this guy's, you know, look at this gym guy. Like he's, he's a libertarian and he runs like the libertarian thing in second life. And we were just like, okay, fine. We're Stalinists. And <laughs> we would just basically embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then. 
And then he bought the hat, right? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. I, yeah, I have a Yushanka and I have a Soviet Union flag and I use it for kind of <laughs> for comedic effect. But that's what all it was. But the, like we just kept looking more and more into the history. But I, I was look, trying to look at it in, as a, in a charitable light. But I was like, no, this is still horrible. <laughs> I understand it. But, you know, there, there's that tendency to kind of be like, well, you know, if, if you're such a jerk and you're calling me this thing, maybe this thing ain't so bad after all. And, you know, and you're, it, there's that tendency to want to kind of like draw you in. But you have to at, at the same time look at it and go, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this person is horrible who's calling me these things. But so is the thing that they're so is the thing that they're calling me. <laughs> like you have to have that kind of intellectual honesty, which I, I think that people like Cantwell and Jared Howe lack. Well, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, if you oppose universal, universal health care, you're racist, right? Yeah. <laughs> like if you oppose anything that I support, you're racist. Yeah. Or, well, or what have you. Maybe racism isn't so bad if, <laughs> if that's the outcome is that we don't well, want Obamacare. You know, yeah. like, is that is that my, my only choice? You know, the dichotomy? <laughs> Is no. that the fi false dichotomy you're giving me? Then, yep. you know, I guess, okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah. All the, all of them, everybody's horrible. Everybody's horrible. Everybody's horrible. Yep. Misan misanthropy is the only solution. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm a, definitely a misanthrope. But that was my, my wrestling name on, on the Freedom Fiends, was the mis misanthropic uh, mongoose. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I always loved having the thought of having a wrestling name. When I first started listening to the Fiends, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And I'm like, I, I actually picked one out for myself, you know, just on the chance that I would ever have one. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not going to do it on my show because that's just aping it really too hard. But uh, then, then Ben Stone went and stole my thunder because I was going to be the seditious scorpion, you know, because <laughs> I live in the Southwest and, you know, and then Ben Stone published his amazing book, which you should read and, you know, buy. And no, no, and it's, it's, a, it's a horrible book. I don't, mean, no, yeah. Don't, I don't. do not. I, I don't want anybody re looking at that book. But if you must, uh, what's the name of the book? <laughs> <laughs> if you like sedition, yeah. I completely sedition disavow this sabotage, book. Sedition and sabotage, field mint. You know, I don't have it in front of me, but because yeah, I don't own a copy. Sabotage. Yeah, I don't either. I've just heard of it, and he had the scorpion on the cover. I'm like, dang it! <laughs> but if you're, you know, if you're gonna have your thunder stolen by anybody, Ben Stone's the guy. Yeah, it can't be stolen by anybody better. So okay. even if his book is really, really, you know, unreadable. Yeah, uh, allegedly. The, 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 my name was was dubbed to me. The one that I wanted and was rejected. <laughs> oh, girls have the worst screams. <laughs> I'm not editing this out, by the way. <laughs> I don't expect you to. I never do. Um, that's funny. <laughs> the name that I wanted, the wrestling name that I wanted, was rejected, and I wanted to be the 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 pit bossing Bobcat because <laughs> I live in Vegas. <laughs> They're like, oh, nah. that, I, I get it. When you said pit boss, I was thinking mosh pit, but yeah, yeah. the whole, yeah, the whole, Ve the whole Vegas thing makes sense. I'm trying to go to the store. It's <laughs> this is great. All right, so we had to take care of some some issues, uh, audio related. <laughs> it's sticky. My, my breathing question got out asking of hand. issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh yeah. what we wanted to do but we were interrupted uh, was to continue our our, our non-stop effort in trolling the uh, the wonderful and great uh brian sovereign uh by doing something completely original that has never been done before and i'm not giving any credit to anybody at so whatsoever we're going to go through some of the things that people have bought using shop.lowbirds.com. And I'm wondering how many people <laughs> how many people we can pinpoint may have been buying these particular products because I think some of them are very uh, telling. This is this is going through the, the whole year. The whole year. <laughs> we're All not right, gonna go through every it. item, but we're just gonna go through some of the some of the more the, important ones. The notables, the standouts. Yeah. So uh, so we have some things like uh, B, uh, BNC male to female uh, audio adapters, uh, bulk f uh, female to male uh, pigtail jumpers, 
And uh, what other things? Sounds dirty. <laughs> Male to female connectors. Um, yeah, so I wonder who could be buying these things because it's also being bought around the same time as people buying uh, pill splitters, uh, kitty bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the easy uh, Alan Carr's easy, easy way to stop smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Cotton swabs, um, hose attachments for for oxygen tanks. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if you uh, buy these things. That's it. Yeah, I got a theory. Uh, I don't Cotton know. swabs, like I don't know. Yeah, for your that's ear. cool. Yeah, you know. On Amazon? I don't know. Yeah. I have <laughs> no idea who would be buying these particular things. But that's great. You know, yeah. More power, more power to you. Yeah. So we also have some uh, interesting ones. We have <laughs> Deadpool's The Art of War. Very good. I, I, <laughs> I have a theory who that could be. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. So <clears throat> Brian's... There's Brian. Jeez, Sun uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War has been called the definitive definitive military strategy on t- and tactics and blah 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 blah, um, and that's what Deadpool's plan is to ensure his vision of art of art of war outsells the original. I guess I could is, see it. Yeah, this, I could see it happening. This actually looks like a really good book. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Hulk on the back too. And the, oh, on the back cover, this is really cool. On the back cover, it's like the Hulk, and he's about ready to smash Deadpool while he's doing some Zen gardening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one can multitask like the Hulk. Yeah. You know? Then we have All of My Friends Are Dead, which is a children's story. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> oh. It's a children's yeah, story about a dinosaur. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So say all my friends are petroleum fuel. <laughs> Thrashing in the tar pits. Yeah, all, all my friends are in, are in a combustible engines right now. Then we have the infamous Iron Man, Volume 1. Uh, I guess it's just Iron Man graphic novel. And we're going to scroll down past all of the, uh, the, 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 the audio equipment and the kitty f- food dishes and... <laughs> <laughs> and the nebulizers and blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah, we got like a Roku S- streaming stick. Hmm. Are you a, are you a, are you a Roku guy? Are you a Fire Stick guy? Are you are you a Chromecast guy? <laughs> I am neither, sir. Wow, you have in, did, neither of those. None did of you those. just as, did you just assume my streamer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess if I had to be one or the other, I'd. Uh, I don't know if I want to go more Amazon stuff. Okay, I, I'd probably go Roku. Roku, yeah. yeah I got yeah. a um, I got a Chromecast, and it's great. But now that I don't have Netflix, but I do have Amazon Prime, it makes it a little bit difficult to stream stuff on there. You can, but it's a little bit yeah. more difficult, and it's not it's it's not as good uh, through the Chromecast. I, I do hear good things about the Fire Stick. But, yeah, yeah. But again, I don't we'll think just they, leave it, we'll leave it at that. Can you do Netflix? I think you can do Netflix with the Fire Stick. Maybe I have to get. I'm one. sure you can. Yeah, and hack it because that's the big thing now is hacking the Fire Stick to get everything. Right. So, mm. what is it? <laughs> Speaking of Brian Sovereign, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the conclusion. Amazon's the best. <laughs> I, and and I have Google. <laughs> <laughs> Worship your uh, you mad bro corporate mad? overlords. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what else? We have an Amazon Basic Classic Notebook. Is now I, I I'm wondering is this a like oh no it's an actual notebook. Okay, it's an actual notebook, not like a laptop. Not notebook. like a laptop. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was like something oh, Am- something you actually write in. Yeah. How archaic. <laughs> I thought Amazon, like you're making laptops now and you're just throwing it in the basics. Okay. I thought you would just say like it's a fire thing. But yeah, it's just a regular plain handwritten notebook. Oh, man. It's so classic. Mm, retro. Sony headphones. Uh, a surge protector. Ro- ro- another streaming Roku stick. Hmm. Man, those things are popular. They're popular. Yeah. Yeah. 
My parents had one. When we went out there, my parents had one. And it's so counterintuitive to search for things. Because, like, even though you have an app for your phone, <laughs> you have to, like, <laughs> use the little on screen up, down, left, and right to, to use the cursor to find the letter to search for things on YouTube. And it's, but it, it has a thing to type on your phone. That's weird. It has a little search thing you can type. And I was like, that's so. So I was looking for things. Like you suck at cooking, and I was trying to show my dad you suck at cooking. Which, by the way, it's an amazing channel. You have to check it out. And <laughs> we're just like having to type all that stuff in, and the spaces. Oh, it was annoying. Yeah, they're not. They're not intuitive at all. No. Someone did buy an Acer uh, convertible laptop, and I'm super jelly. Nice. With the Intel Celeron processor, four gigs of RAM. It's one of those ones you can flip around and stuff. Yeah, man, Super that's mean. awesome. Someone bought a monster, monster hunter siege. Is that a video game, right? I don't know what it is because when you click the link, it says, "Sorry, we couldn't find that page." I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, earphones with a mic? No, you're doing it wrong. Get a nope. real mic. <laughs> unless you're ga- unless you're gaming, unless you're playing Monster Hunter Siege. Yeah. Someone did buy um in. Uh, I, and I know who bought it too. That was Seamus. Fuck it, I'll say it. <laughs> he did. Bu- he did sh- buy a microphone. Seamus plug. Well, because yeah. I, I linked him to. I linked it. Was like you buy one of these, and it used my Amazon uh, link. So he did buy. Uh, it was a. Where is it? I should probably be able to find it. Audio. Oh wow, AT. Oh, this is. I'm never gonna get. <laughs> Audio Technica. <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, it was. Wow, I can't find it. But he, I know he bought it, and I got the money for it. So, well, Will he do your show now that he's been on Tom uh, Tom Woods? Or? No, now now Seamus yeah, is too no. good for us. He's too good for us. He's I still good. love us. Uh, still got love for Freedom Tunes. Yeah. F- good, good shit. He's, he's three important five us, for sure. Um, <laughs> someone bought some, some LED light bulbs. Uh, boring. Boring. No, boring. Boring. Come on, buy someone buy like an anal plug or something like that. So I know, right? Something yeah. like the civious. <laughs> yeah. the, the great p- American pure- challenge. There we go. Something purient. <laughs> Someone's gonna look that up now. Like, what's the great American challenge? Oh my god! <laughs> 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 delete. Delete. <laughs> um. Someone did okay. This was recent. It looks like a recent buy. It was a fingertip pulse oximeter. Huh. Is he still using my link? Huh? He mad, but he's still using my link. Okay. Huh? Good works for you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> or maybe somebody else in the uh, you know the someone healthcare else, industry. Yeah, someone else had had yeah. some issues. Uh, someone also, I, I can't imagine who, you probably won't know who I'm talking about, but yeah. someone did buy a Crawler Calf Tom Aquatic Gardener multi-tool so they can, you know, get stuff out of aquatic tanks, f- tropical fish. Yeah, no idea. Yeah. Brandon would know. <laughs> Brandon I know. Would know. <laughs> That's what I figure, yeah. Oct- a Fisher oh. Price, what is this? F- Fisher Price Octo nuts, Octo crew, eight figure pack. <laughs> awesome. Why? <laughs> Ki- because kids, man. Because kids. Some, yeah. Maybe it was a gift for uh, you know a niece or a nephew or something. Yeah. Linux pocket guide, essential commands. Or- definitely not. This was definitely not Brian Sovereign. to be like. Pfft. This is noob stuff. Whatever. Noob stuff. You just now I put learning that, the basics. I put that under my uh, desk to keep it level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or for fire. <laughs> I keep it in the to start a fire. Uh, filters. A marine filters. Oh, yeah. Hi, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. That's all everyone bought. Someone please buy something stupid so I can make fun of you. <laughs> Shop.lowberts.com. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I don't even really care about donations. I I would much rather people buy Amazon stuff so I can get Amazon credit and that I can go through and see what people are buying. <clears throat> Is that um do they norm how do they pay you affiliate wise or reward you, I should say? Is it 
through credits or well, you you can opt for for cat like they'll send you like or I think they transfer to your bank account or to, right, or right. send you a check. I, you, I think they have those options for it, and that's mm-hmm. the way I originally had it set up. But then at one day, like a f- few years ago, they were like, "Well, you could also just trade it in once you reach ten dollars or, or five dollars." I can't remember what it, the limit was mm-hmm. in Amazon uh, gift cards, and I was like, "Well, I'd much rather have that because I'll just, I'd, you know, rather just Port it. yeah, right." And you could buy pretty much everything, including groceries, on this stuff now. So I was like, "I'll just do okay. that." Yeah. Even cotton swabs. Even cotton swabs. And light bulbs. And and nebulizers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because uh, I because I, I finally got around to setting up my Amazon affiliate link. Oh, nice. And I, I'll yeah, have to use that. Which I'm not. I'm not trying to. Yeah, and I'll use yours. I'm not trying to steal <laughs> your. Not, not trying to steal your thunder here. I'll make sure to order something <laughs> weird. By the way. Yeah. And I told my you know my friends and relatives and one of them went on Amazon and ordered like a. Pretty, I like a DSLR, like a nice camera. Mm-hmm. Oh. Didn't use my link. I'm like, oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> I told you about it. Yeah, anyway. it's great. Anytime someone's like, hey, what should I buy? And I'll be like, like, and I'll be, like, oh, here, let me just send you an Amazon link. And it's a little short, little Bitly link, so they they don't they don't realize like it's like an affiliate link, right? Yeah, and it's just like, here you go, check this out. And they're like, oh, okay. And then cool. It's, and it's funny because sometimes I'll be like, "Here's the link to go buy a microphone," and they'll, and I'm not saying Seamus definitely Seamus did not do anything. And then they'll buy something completely embarrassing, and they're like, "Ah, <laughs> I know what you bought." Yeah. No. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Ah, the inner inner tubes are great. Yeah. So yep shop.lowbirds.com and uh, I'm not going to do this all the time. I just just when I feel the necessary to bri- troll Brian because this is definitely my idea. No one has ever done this before. It's completely unique. By yeah, the way, I you mean sh- you should join the Lowbird Sycophant group because that's completely like, you know, a podcast group solo. <laughs> solo. Yeah. That was completely Never, my idea. Yeah. No one's ever done that before. Totally totally OG. Totally yep. OG. <laughs> So yeah, where can they find more information about your podcast if they want to use your Amazon link? Because you won't read their uh, stuff, but I will read your stuff. Well, you've inspired me. I just may if it's you know interesting enough. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at zgypodcast.com. Uh, that's my website. On iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Android, um, Twitter, at ZGY Podcast. So nice. Yeah, man. It, uh, it's fun. Yeah. And if Good you times. do create content. Even if it is podcast, you should probably hop on YouTube. I know, man. I need that's uh, obviously I need to do that because I, you know, was not up to date with any of the YouTubers you were really speaking about for the most part. So yeah, because it's it, a gap in my it's a gap in my uh, armor. Yeah, there's some really bad YouTubers out there, and they're basically the the go to pleep like socialists go like, look how stupid and caps are. Look at all the YouTube ones, and it's <laughs> you know. Yeah, get out there and show them what's yeah, up. Yeah, but no one's pointing to people like Link Unithar because he's not making videos that much anymore. And the only people that are very visible are these horrible idiots. Horrible, horrible idiots. <laughs> Absolutely embarrassing, fedora-tipping level crap. Neckbeards. Yeah. So if you don't, milady, get on the YouTube. <laughs> Check out Zombies <laughs> Government's new podcast. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. <laughs> hey, always fun, brother. Yeah, always worms. a pleasure. Always interesting worms. That's my hot sauce. I don't know you. I don't know you, bitch. <laughs>